Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to continue this talking about the history of the nuclear model of the atom. We're going to talk about the discovery of the nucleus and hopefully also in the same video end with the nuclear model of the atom. If not, then we're going to continue with the next video on the nuclear model of the atom. So in the previous video we talked about um, Millikan's experiment, the oil drop experiment, and how he was able to use that experiment to determine the charge of the electron and then the mass of the electron as well. Now remember that the original discoverer of the electron was J.J. Thomson. So using the results that was uh, obtained uh, by his own experiments and Millikan's, he then came up with a model of the atom, which is shown here, and that's called the plum pudding model of the atom. And plum pudding is a dessert of sorts, a holiday dessert of sorts, um, that was po that's often served in England, which is where Thompson uh, was from, and he um, called this a plum pudding model because the way he uh, envisioned the atom was that the atom uh, is composed of the electrons, uh, which he knew was a particle negatively charged, so it's going to be distribute, distributed all over this atom, this sphere. Um, and he knows, or you know, people already knew at the time that a negative charge on its own would not be stable, right? So it has to be neutralized by a corresponding positive charge or positive, um, uh, you know, basically a, 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 an equal amount of positive charge. So what he proposed was that the positive charge part of the atom is uh, a cloud that surrounds the electrons, so the electrons are distribute, distributed everywhere in this cloud of positive charge. So if you imagine looking up into the sky, you see these clouds, and then, you know, here and there sometimes you see an airplane flying through the clouds. That's sort of like the way the plum pudding model is. You have this cloud of um, positive charge, and in it you see bits of electron objects, which are electrons distributed in in the uh, in the atom, so that's the plum pudding model. Now, uh, once he proposed this model, one of his uh, former students, Ernest Rutherford, decided that he wanted to test the validity of this plum pudding model of the atom. And Rutherford was a very successful scientist on its own already at that time. But prior to that, he was working with. Uh, in Thomson's uh, laboratory as a, as a student and during that work and further work later on he discovered uh, various types of radiation that could be generated as a result of uh, nuclear fission which is basically just the, the, the fact that uh, an element that's heavy can um, be split apart or can uh, undergo nuclear fission into uh, lighter elements. And so he discovered that when a, a heavier element uh, splits apart into lighter, an, a lighter element, uh, some byproducts are produced, and those byproducts are listed here, the ones that Rutherford uh, found out. One is called the alpha particle, which is basically a positively charged particle. It's fairly heavy with, in comparison to um, in comparison to the electron. So you can see here that when you run through, uh, let's say, a radioactive element in here and you let it go, the byproducts, these byproducts are going to be produced and one of them is the alpha particle. Another one is called the beta particle. It's very light, so it's easily deflected. The alpha particle is heavy, it's hard to be deflected. And then there's also gamma rays, uh, which has no charge and it's not deflected. Okay, so these are just discoveries. Uh, that Rutherford made. So he, uh, the reason I mentioned this is because he wanted to use this alpha particle because it's very heavy. He wanted to use it to see if he were to take an alpha particle or stream of alpha particles, sort of like taking a machine gun basically and you know pointing it towards this atom and started to shoot it, right? He you know proposed that if he were to do that because there's nothing that's very hard in the atom, right? You have this cloud of positive charge and you have these bits of electrons which are not very heavy. Um, the alpha particle that's pretty heavy should be able to just blast through these, um, this atom 
And so if he were to conduct the experiment, he would expect all the alpha particle to pass through the atom and be found on the other side of the atom. Okay, so the setup experiment, let me just show you how it looks like. This is often called a gold foil experiment. This is what it looks like. Basically, he had a uh, gold foil, uh, so a very thin uh, slice of uh, sheet of gold. And then he had a, um, a source of the alpha particle. Remember, you can just basically have a radioactive substance uh, being stored here, and that would generate alpha particles. And the alpha particles is then, uh, you know, arranged so that it would hit through the gold uh, sheet. And the gold sheet presumably are made out of gold atoms. So then as the alpha particle goes forward here, he's, it's going to hit a bunch of gold atoms. And what he proposes is that, you know, if the plum pudding model is correct, then you'll see most of the alpha particle on this side. So this green thing right here is a detector. It's basically a, a piece of metal that would react with the alpha particle in a certain way to tell you to detect the alpha particle. So it, it, it's usually some kind of fluorescence is the way we kind of do this type of experiment. So you'll see that the alpha particle is, you know, would mostly be here due to the fluorescence. Now, uh, let me turn this on real quick um, and see the result of that experiment. So I hope you can see that as that experiment is going on, most of the particles did uh, hit, most of the alpha particles did hit this side of the detector, but you notice that sometimes we see a spot here, sometimes we saw a spot here, so let me just play this a little bit longer. So you see there's one there. And there's another one there. There's another one there. Another one here. Another one here. Here. And so on. Okay. So that's uh, very surprising. Okay. Because, you know, if you go back to the plum pudding model, there isn't any part of this that says that the alpha particle will be deflected uh, uh, in any way, right? Because the electron is very light with respect to the alpha particle. So if the alpha particle hits the electron, the electron would just be blasted away. Okay, will just be hit away. Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have enough mass to withstand the alpha particle. And the, this cloud obviously has also no mass. But the fact that the alpha particle is deflected tells you that there's something within the atom that's very uh, con very dense right a lot of mass in it so much so that it's able to deflect an alpha particle which is quite heavy so going back to Rutherford's uh, experiment you know this is the part where he expected all of these particles to pass through but he found that about one out of eight thousand of these alpha particles are deflected and about one out of twenty thousand are deflected at uh, a 90 degree angle or even lower so they're very def they're deflected very um, at a very acute angle okay which implies that you know the the alpha particle hit something head-on and then it's deflected uh, almost directly back at the experimenter okay and the fact so one of the things that you get out of these numbers is that the fact that only out of one out of eight thousand or you know one out of twenty thousand if you're talking about an acute deflection if you're talking about um, only a small number of the alpha particles are deflected. So what's that imply? You can think about it, right? So he already said that there is this um, very dense mass uh, that's located within the atom. Now, the fact that there's only very few alpha particles are deflected must have implied that this mass is concentrated in a very small volume of the atom very small portion of the atom contains this mass the rest of the atoms must be just empty space because most of the alpha particles pass through the uh, atoms without any issue so in fact you can think about the model of the atom this way now so the top model would be what you would expect the plum pudding model to show right so here's the plum pudding model you expect the alpha particle to all go through and the bottom part is what he actually observed so then he concluded that there must be a small part of the atom which is shown here by the darker color that is um, consists of these positively charged uh, particles right because remember that the electrons have to be balanced by an equal number of 
positively charged particle. So he concluded that the positively charged particle must be somehow arranged all in a small space within the atom in such a way that when the alpha particle hits this positively charged nucleus, later called nucleus, the alpha particle is deflected back. So I'm just going to summarize then Rutherford's uh, nuclear theory of the atom. Once he's discovered this, he made this discovery. He won, by the way, the Nobel Prize in 1908. That was for the uh, discovery of those radiation that I mentioned earlier. But let me just mention what the nuclear theory is, right, the nuclear model. So most of the atom's mass and all of its positive charge is contained in a small core, which is called the nucleus of the atom, okay? And most of the volume of the atom is just empty space. We saw that because all of the uh, all of the alpha particles can just shoot through them without any problem. Most of the uh, alpha particles, in fact. Um, uh, but he kept the Thomson's model, which is to say that the atom, uh, it's empty space, but uh, within it there is uh, bits of these uh, negatively charged electrons, and they're very tiny. They're very light, right? Electrons are very light. Okay. And he said that there has to be the same number of positively charged particle, which we later call protons, uh, and they have to have the same number as the electrons just to maintain charge neutrality so the atom can be neutral. Um, so the protons are what's found in the nucleus. Later work by him and another colleague, Chadwick, showed that uh, in addition to the proton, there's also uh, another particle that's the same mass as the proton uh, but it's electrically neutral and that particle is called a neutron it's also located inside the nucleus and that explains why this nucleus can withstand the alpha particle because the alpha particle is really heavy but it turns out that the nucleus contains both the protons and the neutrons in in there and that's why they're um, strong enough to deflect the alpha particle so I just want to summarize, uh, the. this is the end of this topic, summarize what we talked about in this topic, which is the history of the nuclear model. We started with J.J. Thompson studying the cathode ray, trying to figure out what the cathode ray actually is, and discovering that, that's an elect that basically it's the electron that's making up the cathode ray. And then he was able to use further experiments to figure out the charge to mass ratio of the electron. And then Millikan then uh, used the oil drop experiment to figure out the charge of the electron and then using the charge and the charge to mass ratio calculate the mass of the electron. Thomson came up with the plum pudding model of the atom. This is sort of like on its own path. And then on the other path of this atom study, uh, very early on uh, Becquerel discovered that you can uh, have radiation um, and uh, both him and uh, the Curies, Marie and Pierre Curie, discovered that certain elements can generate this radioactivity. And of course, Rutherford figured out that uh, the products of those radioactive substances are things called alpha and beta particles. He used the alpha particle to test the plum pudding model and figured out that it's not, uh, that there has to be a nucleus inside the atom. And then later on, further work showed that the nucleus consists of the proton, which is the positively charged particle, and then the neutron, which is the uh, electrically neutral subatomic particle. Okay.